you could do it with your eyes closed. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna get right into things because by popular demand, today I am gonna be talking about easy, super simple first sweater patterns. So whether you are a beginner or seasoned knitter but never got around to casting on your first sweater, you've been dreaming about it, you've knit all the things but a sweater, that, that, is, that is the goal. This, this is the episode for you because today I'm gonna be sharing some sweaters that I have knit that I think tick all the boxes when it comes to casting on your very first sweater. And I'm also gonna talk about patterns that I haven't personally knit but have heard through the knitting community grapevine that these patterns would be excellent for a first, very first sweater to knit. So if that is your jam, gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. There was some criteria that I wanted these patterns to meet, and the first being, uh, you know, obviously simple, super easy construction, positive ease, because, you know, when it comes to knitting a sweater, your very first one, you don't want to be too concerned with fit. You just want to get the basics down. The construction, the lay of the land, the nuts and bolts of knitting a sweater. Once you get that down, then you'll feel more confident about graduating to more complex, more involved patterns. When it comes to knitting sweaters, of course, gauge is an important element in it. I mean, of course, it's do as I say, not as I do, because I, I rarely knit a swatch these days, but, but if you are trying to achieve a good fit, gauge will definitely help you out there. But for now, let's just focus on a big, cozy, comfy sweater. We'll worry about the, the more fitted stuff later. I also wanted to look at patterns that were knit from the top down. And the reason for this, not that there's anything wrong with knitting bottom up, but the thing about knitting top down is that you can try on your sweater as you go. So if you're just getting the swing of knitting a sweater, it'll help you to really see or visualize. You know, if you're not sure about fit or how long you should knit knit the body or the sleeves, you can always try it on. And finally, I wanted to look at the pattern itself. I wanted to make sure that they're easy to read, well written, and yeah, just, you know, well edited. And that will make all the difference because I will say there are some patterns out there that are just not well written. They're kind of cryptic and I've, I've encountered, you know, as a seasoned knitter, I've encountered many patterns where I'm just like, what the heck are they? What? Which also brings me to free versus paid patterns. As a beginner knitter, it's very tempting to go for those free patterns and by all means, go for it. If you find a free pattern that you wanna knit, by all means, go for it. But if you are trying to learn to knit a sweater, I would err on the side of caution. I would make sure that that free pattern is either by a reputable knitwear designer or uh, yarn company or pattern company because <laughs> well there are there are so many free patterns out there but I guarantee you most of them it's very hit or miss because some of them are not tech edited there are a lot of typos there are errors and they're just not they're not well written so again make sure that you're getting a pattern a free pattern from a reputable designer and pattern company um, but when it comes to paid patterns for the most part you can rest easy that you're going to get a quality pattern it's most likely been tech edited, it's been tested, it's been put through the ringer before it's been published. So by paying for that pattern, you're not only paying for the work that went into publishing that pattern, but you're also paying for the learning experience. Paying somewhere upwards of six or seven dollars for your very first sweater knitting pattern, that those skills that you learn from that pattern are gonna carry on throughout the rest of your life, your knitting career. Uh, you're gonna take those skills that you learned from knitting that pattern and it will last you a lifetime. So try to look at it as an investment. Investment. If you're a little apprehensive about splurging on a sweater pattern for your first sweater project, um, just something to keep in mind. But again, if you find a free pattern that you want in it, by all means, go for it. And I'm going to mention both free and paid in here. So now that we have the criteria out of the way, let's get into the patterns themselves. The first pattern I want to mention is actually several in one, and that is any sweater pattern by Elizabeth Zimmerman. And I mentioned this in a previous episode recently that the sweater that I'm knitting now, Marga the Mannequin <laughs> was wearing, was modeling this in that episode. And this is the round yoke pullover by Elizabeth Zimmerman. It's from her book, Knitting Without Tears. And I picked this book up, I don't know how many years ago, over 10 years ago, probably. It's from chapter four, Seamless Sweaters. And this is again, yeah, Seamless Yoke Sweater. It's right here. And it's basically a recipe for 
designing your own sweater. And it's, bear with me, I know that sounds really complex for a beginner sweater knitting pattern, but hear me out. She has a brilliant formula where once you have your gauge, you just plug in your numbers and go. Your, your pattern is written and it's, com like, seriously, it doesn't get any easier than that. <laughs> And you're looking at my sweater and you're probably thinking, Kristen, yeah, but the color work, that's insane. Like, I'm, I'm just beginning to knit a sweater. There's no, like, where did that come from? I, I hear you, I see you. And yeah, I will admit that when I knit this sweater, I was, you know, I had a couple of sweaters on my under my belt already. And I felt confident enough where once I had my numbers to knit the sweater, I pulled out a stitch dictionary, something like this. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't the book that I used in particular to knit this sweater. I'm not really sure what happened to that book, but you know what I mean. Just grab a, um, any stitch dictionary that you have lying around with color work. And, you know, I found a motif in that book that matched the numbers that I had in my um, equation. And I was able just to plug and play and go with that. So again, super simple, super easy. And again, the book is Knitting Without Tears by Elizabeth Zimmerman. It's a thin book, but she has a plethora of sweater patterns in here. She's got the one that I'm wearing. She has a raglan one. She has a saddle shoulder one. Um, all, all the sweaters you can think of in here. And she really kind of you know, walks you through, holds your hand. Again, this book doesn't contain traditional knitting patterns the way we're used to seeing knitting patterns. They're more kind of like recipes. It's very, it's written out in prose. It's like she's in the room with you, holding your hand, like a good friend or relative, sitting down, teaching you how to knit. And that's what I really love about this book. Um, I have a couple of her, her other books as well. I have The Knitter's Almanac and Knitting Workshop at both excellent books. Honestly, if you are a knitter, get some of Easy's books in your library because they are worth their weight in gold, my friends. I will link to them down below. Number two, The Basic Raglan by Hohi Locatelli. And this is a sweater that I knit for my husband. It looks like a big blue blob or more more on the black side. It's a, ver it's a very dark navy, if you will. Um, but I knit this for my husband because he was begging me and begging me for a sweater and I wanted something super easy, super quick to knit up. Granted, it is it is knit out of fingering weight yarn. I used um, the Fibrico's Lore, which is a really lovely, lovely yarn. I don't know if they make it anymore, but it's 100% lamb's wool. Yeah, as the name of the pattern suggests, it's a basic raglan pullover. Uh, knit from the top down and yeah, I mean, Nothing else to write home about here, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Number three is the Stripes Pullover by Andrea Mowry. And yeah, again, another super simple, straightforward pattern. It calls for fingering weight yarn, but this I feel like is a great pattern for a newbie sweater knitter because stripes. I mean, it's like knitting a sock, a, a pair of stripey socks, because just one more stripe, one more stripe. And before you know it, you have a finished sweater. Even though even though it's knit out of fingering, it just goes, it flies off the needles. This was done in no time. Like the Elizabeth Zimmerman uh, round yoke sweater, this has a round yoke. You cast on from the top and knit outwards in the round, increasing as you go, and then finish the body, and then you finish your sleeves and you have a sweater. Again, super simple. It's like knitting a body sock. Um, and this certainly gets a lot of wear for me. I, you know, I definitely want to knit another one, maybe a little bigger. Um, but yeah, just a really, really great pattern, especially for beginners. Next up, we have the Felix pullover that Margo the Mannequin behind me is wearing. This is a pattern by Amy Christophers. And what I love about this pattern is that, again, it's just a very simple, very basic raglan, pullover, but it has this really beautiful, simple eyelet detail along the raglan increases. The simple eyelet detail along the raglan increases just adds a little something extra to an otherwise very, very simple pattern. And don't let that scare you away because where you would otherwise do a simple make one or make one left or make one right increase, you're simply yarning over to create that eyelet detail. Super easy. And it looks, it makes the sweater look 
like it was more complicated than it really was. And after you finish knitting the Felix pullover and you have a great time, you can then cast on her Felix cardigan. Yes, she has a cardigan version of the sweater, which I, I've had my eye on. It's in my queue and I hope to cast one on soon because again, this sweater gets a lot of wear from me. Next up, we have the Love Note sweater. And sadly, I do not have this, <laughs> this sweater here with me today because unfortunately, somehow this sweater landed up in the, in the wash, in the tumble dryer, and it shrunk. I know, a tale of woe for sure, but um, that, that just gives me an excuse to knit another one because, oh my goodness, this sweater is a piece of cake. And don't let the lace scare you. I mean, you know, if, if you have never knit lace before, this might, this might be a little bit of a challenge, but if you are an adventurous beginner and don't mind a little bit of a challenge, check out the Love Note sweater because again, it's by Tin Can Knits um, and Tin Can Knits are known for their beginner patterns. Like they're, they're all about teaching knitters how to knit. Again, it's just a simple top-down round yoke sweater with a lace motif inserted in the yoke. And yeah, while the, while the lace looks complicated, it's a very simple, very intuitive, easy to memorize stitch pattern. So again, if you're an adventurous beginner and don't mind trying a little lace. You can even knit a swatch first to make sure you get the gist of it. It's, you could do it with your eyes closed. Next up, we have the No Frills Pullover. And this is a sweater that I'm still working on. I'm still <laughs> knitting away on it. Uh, this is a pattern by Petite Knit. And yeah, just another basic raglan construction. Um, and I will say the one, you know, while this is a very similar construction compared to the basic raglan by Hohi Locatelli, each designer has a different take on it. So no, no two patterns are ever the same. Uh, and, and especially this one, this one has, it has a different shape. So, you know, there's, um, there's, there is some short row shaping in the back, which if you are, by the way, if you are, uh, if you've never knit a sweater before and your pattern calls for short row shaping in the back and you're not comfortable doing that, you can completely omit that. That's not something you have to worry about for your first pattern. When it comes to short row shaping in sweaters, what those short rows do is that it creates some extra fabric in the back of the sweater, kind of raising the neckline a little bit. So when you put the sweater on, you don't, sometimes, if, you know, you have a curved back, like a hunchback like I do, <laughs> and you wear a sweater without those short row shapes, the the back, the, the hem of the sweater kind of lifts up a little bit. It's a little shorter in the back. Let me, let me stand up so you can see. This sweater, by the way, has no short row shaping and you know, it's long enough where it's fine, but if you do have a little bit of a crop, I noticed that, you know, sometimes my sweaters will raise up in the back like this and that those short rows will just kind of give it that extra fabric it needs to kind of even things out, if that makes any sense. I would consider this a cropped sweater just because it ends like around my waistline and then she has you do some decreasing around here right before the ribbing just to kind of give it a little a little poof if you will so that's something to consider and then she also gives instructions for omitting that as well you can just do the ribbing um so lots of options very versatile uh sweater pattern that i would definitely recommend for a beginner sweater knitter the last pattern that I've personally knit or am currently knitting <laughs> is um, a very popular one. You've probably seen it floating around the internet or on your Instagram feed or on Ravelry. Uh, and that is the Turtle Dove 2 by Espatrico. This is a free pattern. Espatrico, like they are a yarn shop based in Montreal and they have a wonderful catalog of free patterns that you can download. They're very simple, very to the point. Um, this is my first time knitting an Espatrico pattern, but you know, a lot of knitters around the knitting community love their patterns. And yeah, so this is my first time knitting one and very simple, very straightforward. It's a turtleneck and very big and flowy, loose, positive ease, very cozy. Um, but I did notice something with the pattern where some of the instructions could have been written a little more clearly. I'm not throwing shade at Espatrico. They are, you know, I've met the owners in person. They're incredibly lovely and talented and nothing, nothing bad to say about them. But I, if I had one, one bit of constructive criticism, I would have reworded some of the language when it came to the raglan increases. Aside from that, a lovely pattern that, you know, if I didn't have a million other things on the go, I probably would have been done with this already. But uh, yeah, again, this is just gonna be a really nice, cozy, 
chunky cardigan that I'm probably gonna live in for the rest of my days. So those are the sweater patterns that I have personally knit that I would recommend. Uh, so now I'm gonna move into other patterns that I think might be good options for you if you are looking for a very first sweater to knit. Um, the first one may come as no surprise, and that is <laughs> the Flax Pullover by Tin Can Knits. Again, Tin Can Knits are known for their beginner-friendly patterns. They're all about teaching knitters how to knit, and the Flax is is no exception. I mean, this pattern, it, it doesn't get any more straightforward than this. Um, it's again, another basic raglan, but they add this really nice garter stitch detail along the, the sleeves. So it adds an element of interest. Um, you know, it's not just a plain Jane type of sweater. Um, and the cool thing about this pattern is that it's incredibly size inclusive. They have patterns all the way from an infant. Again, that's another idea. Instead of knitting an adult garment, knit a baby garment. Baby garments are, seriously, a baby sweater, probably the easiest gateway drug into knitting a sweater, <laughs> an adult size sweater, because they're small, they're quick. Um, so yeah, uh, the flax comes in many, many different sizes, all the way from an infant, all the way up to an adult uh, 6XL. So flax pullovers for everybody. And then there's also the Novus sweater, another pattern by Petite Knit, very similar to the Turtle Dove. It's got a turtleneck and then a round yoke where you make all your increases, a very size inclusive one, extra small, all the way up to a 5XL. Uh, it calls for lace plus worsted weight held together. Um, or you can just go with an Aran weight yarn. So that should end up pretty quickly. Um, and then also if you are, instead of a pullover, you want to knit a cardigan, uh, Petite Knit also has a Novus cardigan, bulky edition. So, you know, this one could definitely fly off the needles. And if you're looking to incorporate a little more texture into your first sweater, if you feel like, you know, a little bit of a challenge, not that this looks like it's very challenging, <laughs> Wave of Change by Denise Bayron. I mean, this is, looks like a very simple, very cozy and fun sweater as well. I mean, bulky yarn, top down, textured raglan. What's cool about this one is that it has garter ridges to add that extra element of interest. Moving along, we have another pattern by Hohi Locatelli, the super simple summer sweater. Need I say more? According to Hohi, it's a very basic sweater with a deep circular yoke, a boxy fit, and fresh looking stripes. Um, it's worked in worsted weight yarn, so if you were considering knitting the stripes pullover by Andrea Mowry, but a little on the fence about working with fingering weight yarn, this might be another option because again, it's worked with worsted weight yarn, which is thicker, and it also has stripes. So you can, you know, mix and match different stripes as thick or as thin as you want. I mean, lots to play with here. And then we have the DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mary, another another Andrea Mary pattern. Um, and you know, this one I actually really, really like because it doesn't have a total turtleneck. It's kind of like a crew neck with like a slight, turtle, half turtle, I don't know, what do you call those turtlenecks? <laughs> um, where it's not quite a full turtleneck. Uh, this one is knit out of sport weight yarn. And again, just another top down round yoke. I mean, so many top down round yoke sweaters to be had here, pick your poison. Then another viewer, I, I'm sorry, I'm blinking on your name, but someone mentioned the Winston Pullover by Jane Richmond. And I could totally see this one flying off the needles as well because it's knit out of super bulky yarn. So go to your local craft store, get yourself some super bulky fun yarn and have at it with this one. Last but not least, this is a new to me designer. I haven't really come upon her patterns before. Maybe I've just been living under a log, but um, the Gallant Sweater by Kadri, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, again, just one of those, you know, half turtleneck sweaters knit out of super bulky yarn, um, you know, raglan construction this time. And if you don't wanna be fussed with ribbing, this pattern is for you. It's just cast on and go, and when you're done, you cast off. Yeah, top down raglan, no ribbing. And uh, sizes extra small to 5XL. So you're all in good company. Oh my goodness, that. That was a lot of patterns, my friends. I hope that one of these patterns has inspired you to cast on your very first sweater. The very first sweater you knit most likely will not be your best. <laughs> so go into it expecting that. Be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself. And at the end of the day, just, just have fun with it. You know, find some yarn that inspires you, some colors you love, a color palette or what have you, and just 
have fun. Uh, because if you're not, what's the point? Uh, and you'll get it. You'll get there. After your very first sweater, um, you'll feel more confident. After your second sweater, you'll be even more confident and so on and so forth. And then, you know, by your fifth sweater, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be a pro at this, guys. You'll be knitting all the sweaters and you won't know what to do with them or where to store them. Uh, case in point, I've still, I have a yeah, pile that I have to figure out what to do with. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, if, you, if you're new here, welcome to my little corner of the interweb. This is not the normal format of my episode or my channel. Usually I sit down and share what I've been working on, primarily knitting and sewing. But if, you, if you're here and you enjoyed this episode, thanks for coming by. If you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe down below. If you'd like to support the work that I do here and unlock some perks and bonuses, bonus unlock some bonus content from yours truly, consider becoming a member. All you have to do is click the join button down below and for the price of a fancy schmancy monthly cup of coffee, you can enjoy some bonus content from yours truly and, and an invite to our private Facebook group. That said, have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you next time. Bye.